Hello and welcome to today's tutorial. Today we'll be understanding logic and code planning. If you haven't watched the last one, please do so now. Let's start. What is pseudocode? Pseudocode is a high level description of an algorithm that is described in English like words that can be translated into any programming language available. Here are the four different algorithms for the same thing. Notice this is not syntax specific and it can be translated to any language possible. Why plan with pseudocode? It's easier to plan out execution order as you don't need to rely on specific syntax. It helps the organization side of the algorithm, knowing what works and how you want it to function. Frees up the organization and layout of the final algorithm. Universally readable to all types of programmers, not dependent on certain programming knowledge and making the idea and structure clear. The left hand side of the screen is the algorithm in standard English. This is more easier for any programmer as it doesn't rely on specific syntax knowledge. And to the right is C sharp. The first language is C sharp. Int is an integer, so we create an integer called time and we assign it 60. Then we do an iteration loop while time is more than zero. If so, we take away one from the variable time. And once that's finished, we create a variable that's a string called final display. We assign it to time is up and the time to string since an integer is not a string. Then we finally display it back to the screen. Here is the same solution but in Python and notice as there's no data type because Python is not statically typed. So the compiler knows what data type it is. There's no curly brackets nor semicolons as white space is the delimiter. So we assign time to 60. Then we do a loop while time is more than zero. Then we assign time to time take away one. We create a variable called final display. We assign it to time is up plus string time since remember that we can't use an integer in a string so we use that function str to translate it back into a string then we display it back to the console this time let's use a functional programming language that's different from imperative languages like python and c sharp we have to specify that we want to use a mutable type because functional programming tends to have them immutable meaning that once you send them, you can't resend them back to something different. So we have an integer that is time that's assigned as 60. While time is more than zero, we will assign time to time take away one. Then we have a final display. This is a string called time is up. Then we use a format specifier to translate that back into a string and join it up and display it back to the console. Let's now go into logic. Purpose of logic conditionals. It gives the program the chance to act like a human brain, making choices demanding on results. It will allow us to loop while certain conditions are true. It will allow to make certain decisions depending on variables or conditions. Here is a flow chart of that same algorithm in different languages. There are four types of logic. If, else if statements. Switch statements, which is for specific type conditioning. Iteration loops, or for each while, do while loop and the ternary operator. The first logic that everyone learns is an if else if statement, the most basic statement any programmer will learn. The condition is only executed if the criteria returns back true. The not operator can be used if you want to check for something that's false as true. Here are two examples. The one to the left both returns true. And notice as there's different syntax for saying true. Either two equal marks or just the variable itself if it's boolean. Here's the same but with false and the double marks. The second popular one is the switch statement. It helps to aid repetitive coding, prevents nesting or multiple if statement. It can only be applied to one variable at one given time. There's a conditional, a case and a default case if none of the criteria were found. You cannot use more than, less than, more than equal, or less than equal in the conditionings. This is only available in version basic. The one to the left is just simply using ifs or nested ifs, and the one to the right is just using the switch. And notice as it's more handy and you don't need to update the if statement because the default case will always be activated if it's not 3, 4, or 5. Iteration loops are really important for programming as this allows the program to constantly update its values or screen, but only activates if it's true and stops immediately if it's false. It's great for checking 
and updating regularly, but it can cause issues if you don't control it, which causes an infinite loop which will decrease the chances of your application working correctly. The one to the left is a while loop. It will check, then it will execute the inside body. Then it stops if the number is less than five. And the one to the right is using a do while loop, which executes first, then checks. But notice as the number goes above five, as it does the operation, then it checks. Unlike the while loop, which checks, then executes the inside body. The for loop and for each loop would not be taught in this tutorial, as this is mostly used with collections and arrays. The ternary operator acts like the if statement, but only takes three arguments, the condition, the true condition, and the false condition. This helps to minimize code length, but has no impact with the code itself, so it's optional. And it's easy to understand, because it tends to be in one line only. The first one checks if the number is more than 10, it will execute the left side of the body, then if it's false, it will execute the right hand side of the body. And notice as the output is different from the first and second. So we have a variable, the variable name equals the condition that we want to check, a question mark, what we want to execute if it's true, and what we want to do if it's false. And now we will learn how to operate using an object in Hammer.